yes. Now it's being recorded. Yes. Perfect. And I start again this where we stopped last time and do it in full presentation mode. Here you see that um, these, what I explained here was that we have these um, techniques of aggregating to the macroeconomic level and then con give conclusions on those. Professor, might, yes? We still don't see your screen. You cannot see it now. Okay. I tried again. Now? Yes, that's perfect. Okay. Great. Thank you. And um, and this means that uh, two of these examples are cost benefit and cost impact analysis that we have the quantitative evaluation based on the welfare theory on the one hand side and the examples and we will dive into one of those examples um, later is um, agriculture tariffs, subsidies, um, transfer policies. When do we, when governments decide to just give a transfer and not to have subsidies, for example, the, um, and the ben benefit alternatives is that if you cannot, and this is, ex uh, uh, this is very important, in some cases, it's very hard to quantify, to monetize uh, what you see. And this is, for example, then an alternative, the willingness to pay. That means, imagine you try to value a sort of region and it's a forest region and you say, yes, how much is it worth to preserve this region here? And um, then, of course, there is a willing, willingness to pay analysis. You can also have alternative approaches like hedonic approaches, like house pricing. That you see where the house pricing are higher, there is also a higher monetary value of this region. And to come up exactly with these alternative um, good um, or, or monetarization of goods and Another example would be the travel cost method for ecosystem services. And that one say where people have um, a, a travel and the, the cost for, for traveling is in average higher than you can also um, de derive from these indications on how you can value this kind of region, region in terms of leisure, in terms of ecosystem functions, et cetera. That means you have on the one hand side, very clear monetary methods on, uh, you can use, but if you don't have a poor monetary value, um, then you need to try to have these kind of support measures that you can derive and indicate crossly this kind of value to have a monetary value. Um, uh, assessed. This is on the one hand side cost benefit and the cost is normally relatively okay to monetize. The benefit, this is the hardest problem because benefit, you cannot clearly say what is my benefit. This is because of deviating from the rational principle. We do not behave rational all the time. And um, this is one attempt. And the second is, and this is the best alternative from cost benefit analysis is a cost impact analysis. That, and say, yes, I only look at the target, how to reach the target I'd like to have to lowest cost or the highest impact with the same or the best cost impact ratio. We will also have an, uh, example on this in terms of agriculture modeling, I will show you in the today or also in the following week. That means these are the two major ideas and attempts how to um, classify this normative approach. And one of one big thing is here the welfare analysis. Uh, it's it's sort of impact analysis. And we have heard already last time on the Pareto and the Adam, um, the Pareto optimal solution. Can you remember this Pareto criteria versus uh, Calder Hicks? 
not that Pareto was that one say, okay, what is possible as an alternative for the alternative instrument? I can really introduce new policy instruments, but I cannot, and this is a precondition, worsen any group in society that they are that they have losses. And then I have to stop. I can always introduce new policies until the point where I really have a worse situation for one group in society. Of course, this is not how we behave in our real policy, the policy of small steps. Um, we behave normally in the way of Calder Hicks that one say, yes, we can also um, allow that other, some groups are worse uh, uh, and have losses in, in society, but the winners, the people who really benefit from this instrument, what I introduce, they have to compensate um, the losers. That means this would be the criteria of Calderix, and it is really a valid criteria because you see it all over in society and in real policy making. You see that one say, okay, can I really introduce this kind of tax? Of course, it harms um, uh, some or it harms people, but on the other hand, there is overall a welfare benefit, and with this welfare benefit, I can also um, have a compensation uh, for the losers in in the society. That's a little bit the idea of these criteria, okay? And Adam Smith says of this, the hand of the in, invisible market system that there is always an equilibrium, the equilibrium price, and you see it exactly here, um, that this is a supply function and the, the demand function. That means um, with, this, with increased prices, the, um, the people or the, the companies, they produce more and with increased prices, the consumers, they um, also consume less. Exactly this is what you see here because on the X here, you see the quantity of consumed or produced goods. And here on this price X, you see the, the higher the price, the, the less consumers consume. And the higher the price, the more suppliers or, or the companies produce. You can exactly now, um, as an idea, you can then interpret exactly this. This is a maximum willingness to pay. And this is the marginal cost the company produces, under which companies produce. That means at this cost here, the producers are able to cover their own costs, but they don't have any additional benefit. They need a very slight benefit to say, yes, it is worth to produce. And this is exactly expressed in this kind of function, in the supply function. And here you can say, the consumer say, yes, I would pay this amount, but not a little bit more, otherwise it is not worth uh, to do so because of my restrictions in the salary I have. And now it comes to a very virtual game of consumer surplus and producer surplus. That means if a producer now has produced uh, a good at this price here, then he would have gained, he would have a benefit. And if it's an equilibrium price here, then you can also derive in, in, in an integral, you can derive this kind of um, uh, surface or uh, um, this area where you really say, this is the sur producer surplus. And this is a quantity here, the, this quantity from here to here times the price from here to here. That means you can quantify in this equilibrium price the producer surplus, and this is a benefit, the net benefit from the producers. Okay? And vice versa, the consumers, they can also have a surplus because 
they pay only this kind of price here, but they would pay here this price maximum, a maximum price of this. They can do it, but they don't do it because they get the good at the equilibrium price to, to this price. That means this area here is a virtual, it's also a virtual consumer surplus that is exactly the integral again that you say this area is also a sort of benefit the consumers have if they pay only the equilibrium price. And this is how it is done, but with preconditions. And the precondition is perfect market structure, factor allocation, no market failures, externalities, and the symmetric information. Symmetric information, everybody in the market system no, it's the same. Um, and market failure, no monopolism is involved here. And the factor allocation is effective is also the, the factors on um, human capital um, and then on land and on uh, and monetary capital. This is exactly optimal allocated. That means it is again here theory. It never happens in real world. Okay. And I will just show you now in the next three slides some examples. You don't have to capture everything here and to say, okay, I do not understand. We will then subsequently, we will dive into this topic with some very small exercises, okay? This would be uh, welfare analysis on the net import to protect national markets. You see this country here, it's a country model. You see here the output of the entire country of one product, and you see that they produce as here, this is the solution, the world market price. They have to import and they have to import because they don't have the equilibrium price, they have the price here. That means they, this amount you have here, they have to import because they consume a lot more than they produce. That means they consume more and they produce less to compensate or to fulfill the demand of the entire country. You see, this is the dis difference here, the distance here. This is what they have to import. But if they do it now in terms of, and this is wealth analysis very much looking at those, if they now, the government says, no, we don't want this because um, we want to pose an import tariff, then you can increase the price of the good that is imported. And that is exactly, you have a new price from this price to this price. Yes, okay, that means the goods are more expensive. That means the domestic demand is shrinked. The surplus or the, the import quota is reduced. And you see the people in the country, the, the companies that produce more from here to here. That means from here to here. And they, also the demand is reduced from here to here. That means because of higher prices, sorry, because of higher prices, you have higher goods because of the import tariff. And now you come and try to say, yes, this is what the government gets because the government posts the import tariff. And these are the dead weight losses from loss of trade and loss of specialization um, benefits. That means specialization benefits are typically that you grow soya in Brazil because in Brazil you have the best cost yield ratio. You can produce because it's, it's more comfortable to because of site conditions and you produce it there and then you, you bring it to Europe. It's trade theory. It is not that we don't say anything about external effects now and environmental pollution. This is at this level not the case. 
And then we have, in contrary, the trade losses. This is if we trade, we can also find the, the lowest, the, the good to lowest cost, and we use all efficiency potential. If we don't do it because of the import tariff, then we have a loss. And these are the dead weight losses because of specialization and not doing trade. That means here we have losses and here we have an income. And this is exactly a welfare, a welfare equation uh, uh, in theory. Benefits from this area and losses here and here. And this would be a very typical welfare analysis in terms of trade. We can then go one step further and say, yes, we want to shift it. We shift all the different functions. We can shift it from a consumer tax. That would be this demand curve. We shift in parallel to this demand curve. That's a consumer tax because, because of the higher prices the, tax, the, the consumers have to pay, we reduce than the kind of demand. And we can also have changes in behavior patterns. This is exactly what you asked for at the very beginning is we need to be more sustainable in our patterns. We need to, to, to show what is possible that we act and think more sustainable. That would be to shift, for example, the demand curve. We would, and this is what several people claimed at the beginning, we need to change our patterns to more higher sustainability, and this would be a shift. And these are the trade and uh, optimal losses in the trade specialization. Just to show you some ideas of how um, the welfare analysis is done. And on, in contrary, also the producer tax, you shift again the domestic supply uh, function towards a higher level. That means if we shift it, we produce less. The, con the producer has to pay an additional tax and they will, the prices are going up and the consumers have to pay a higher price you would have exactly this equilibrium price here, okay? And the technical progress, it would be from a, from a domestic supply function, you have a shift of the function, that means you can, to the same price cost ratios, you can produce more. It's a shift on the technical progress. And then people are doing, and this is just to show you, these correlations between the countries. That means if the intervention have now coupled payments, that means that um, the, um, the government pays farmers uh, additional money per hectare. That would be exactly this, that you have here the supply function and you shift it towards this. That means this is additionally produced from here to here, but you see also this was a surplus before at EU level. That means it was already more produced than it was consumed on this market, like a cereal market, like a, like a maize market, like a fruit markets, whatever. And that means the surplus because of this instrument, this coupled payment is risen by this red bar. That means the entire surplus is now this minus this, oh, sorry, minus this. That means you have this quantity here as a surplus. What can you do with the surplus? Yes, you can, of course, export because you have to export it because you have to get rid of it. We have too much at EU level in formers in previous terms, not anymore, but we had too much on the markets. That means we had to get rid of it, but how can we do it? We have to pay now um, the 
um, the price difference from the world market price and the high price at EU level, that means the government has to pay an extra amount of money in order to get rid of it uh, to, uh, to world markets. And this is exactly where it was accused that EU system really destroys markets in Africa. It, is, it destroy markets all over the world because of this dumping. And this is called dumping. And the subsidies surplus is then at EU export. They export it, and you see in the net, this is a market equilibrium. It would be exactly the same. And then the price is going down. And on the loss of um, net exporter in a third country would be exactly this. They would have, this is a constellation of a net exporter. That means a country exports more then it consumes, it likes, likes meat in, in uh, Argentine, and Argentine. That means they would export to this level. Don't be shocked now with this kind of drawings. It is, I will explain later in small exercises, but this would be exported this quantity because it's not the equilibrium price. It is that you have a higher quantity and you have to get rid of it. And this is the meat market in Argentina. And then you would have this price difference and you would have one additional, because of this effect, extension of, um, or in this case, a reduction of the export situation. That means the Argentina is able to produce to export less because of the dumping what the EU here has been uh, applied. That means if you have export subsidies, the export of other countries of net exporters is being reduced by from here to here this quantity. And in terms of loss, it is this loss in terms of quantity times the price difference from this amount. Yeah, it would be like, I just say something, 10 euros, 12 euros, and here from 1 million tons to 800,000 tons. That is exactly then the loss in terms of for net exporters if EU poses export subsidies because, because of generating, um, uh, generating surpluses. And the surpluses, they have been generated because of subsidies. And this is, for example, the coupled, coupled payments. That was just a very small excursus of the welfare theory that you see how it has been applied, how it is always applied in this kind of um, um, area. And if you allow, after this general classification, I come then to one exercise, okay? And just to get it right, the micro theory again is part of the political economics, the economic behavior of the units. And what I mentioned here, and it's just to reveal it again, that we base everything on household theories, how households behave, how, how also single companies behave, and we add up, and then we deduct a certain behavior within the economy and within the society, and we can draw then um, some welfare um, analysis. And this is a very traditional um, uh, welfare analysis we can apply. And beyond this, we have the macroeconomy, and this is that we already work with aggregated, aggregated values. That means changes of national income, levels of employment at national level, inflation rates and so on. And we draw also models from those, but this is not our part. We in our welfare analysis 
are doing not macroeconomic theory, we do the microeconomic theory. That means base, we base everything on the smallest units in societies, companies, and so on. And we aggregate those and then we look at the effects if we introduce then policy instruments at a national level, okay? And this might be, and now it comes a little bit already to the environmental cases, it might be that, might be that we pose a tax on fertilizer and we say, yes, this is exactly then what happens if it would be this, it would be exactly a fertilizer tax would be from here, domestic supply in a EU system and a shift, a producer tax. The producer has to pay higher prices for their input. And with this higher prices for their input, they reduce the production. That means the production is shrinked. And this is that the prices are going up. That means also the consumers, they have to pay higher prices. And this is exactly what are then environmental standards. Do we want to pay for a product with higher environmental standards more, for example, a producer tax or a consumer tax, whatever it is, a sugar tax, Whatever it is, you can think about many fold issues and the sugar tax would be exactly this. You would have in the supermarket, you have a tax on those products which, are of, uh, with, with, which have a, a tax on a high sugar content, then the, cons the curve will be, the function will be in parallel shrinked uh, or shifted to the left and you see then coming from this you would have a, a higher prices to pay and you would have also a shrink cons consumption and these are the issues of what kind of instruments do i need and you try to quantify it in this way of uh, welfare analysis if we need, it's 11 o'clock, uh, uh, I can also start right away. Uh, maybe we can have an, another exercise right now if there's no, nobody objects, okay? Somebody objects? Otherwise, you take your three minutes and I will not um, see it. Now, if we go now to the exercise one, and this is, it should bring you now in a didactic way, also this welfare analyst a little bit closer, but with a hands-on example. That means, that means I bring here the FDI, the foreign direct investments in the land. Do we need standards in the frame of environmental policies? That's a question. And what, are, what kind of standards do we need? This will be uh, explained later, but this is exactly one example of the land grabbing. You know this land grabbing issues and I will just explain a little bit on those, how we can define it. We had um, an investor at our conference, it was 2015, it was from Agrica LTD and foreign direct investment manager. This is Agrica LTD. You can also have a look at those. This is a Carter Coleman. It's a very good guy because he tries to build a big investment in order to preserve an area in Tanzania to better preserve biodiversity. His intention is very good, but he's a manager and it is a $100 million investment. And it has, and now it comes to the idea of also negative effects, because negative effects is that he needs to collaborate with small scale farmers, but also small scale farmers 
had to be resettled. And of course, per se, this is really a negative impact that small scale farmers are resettled to other regions because of investments. And this would be negative, of course. And I just have a very small clip what he says, if I can open it. We can just hear in, in one minute. That was our conference. Professor, we can't hear or see anything. Stefan? Yeah. Ah, okay. Thanks. Yes, what happened? It was it was off for a minute. Ah, it, it, but you saw it? No, no, no. We're just stuck on the presentation. Oh, okay. Okay. I think potentially it could only screen share like one, okay. one thing at a time. I don't, I don't one know. One second. Why it is not working is because it opens. Now you cannot see it. No, we're still looking at the presentation slides. Okay, okay. That's a pity. I can just try Free for this technical issue. No, it's okay. I think also when you're screen sharing, it's not possible to share sound as well. So like even if you would have played the video, we might have not been able to hear what he's saying. Okay, okay. Yes. Let I me think just screen try. Screen sharing is only Sorry like that I, I have to try it. It's a bit it seems messy, but it should not be messy. No, um, it's fine, it's fine. No. Sorry, one second. If you see maybe... I tried again. <clears throat> if it... Maybe this way. Does it work? Does it work? Uh, no. Well, I'm, we're still looking at like your, like fo this folder okay. with a bunch okay. of files in it. Then I cannot show it in uh, in the Zoom. I don't yeah, know. I think it's screen yeah. share like limitation. Okay. But you know, to, just to explain, he's looking at. Um, he says. Yes, what we need is that we need um, donor support and we need to build roads and infrastructure from the donor's perspective. And, um, and do you see the screen now? No? Do, do uh, you see the PowerPoint? We're just, no, we're just looking at the folder stuff. Okay. Maybe it would be better if we just watch the videos ourselves for like the next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That. That's true. That's true. Now it should work, yeah? Now you see yeah. the, again, it, yeah. Go back with the presentation. Okay, go back with the presentation. Yes, then please have a look at the video. Then I will upload them, but it's nothing really uh, big. The, he said that um, from London, he said that this is exactly the, the, he works in London, he's from the States. And he said, yes, we need high investments in order to be competitive. And we need it because of technology transfer. And there is also some, um, the, the way is always looking at the, at the implementation mode, how it will, it is uh, implemented, this kind of um, um, investment, no? And, um, oh, sorry, that was my, it is again, I have now, okay. How it is, um, done and you know this land grabbing issue and i will just give you if if you see the the powerpoint now no objection okay if you see it now i will just give you some uh, ideas of what's going on in this area and then we come to small exercise here 
Um, what is um, it is like uh, 5.3 um, times in terms of size what is already sold worldwide uh, of Portugal, or it's a it's an average of Spain um, that is uh, under land grabbing or the foreign direct investment in land is um, is sold worldwide and there is a big um, driver towards this that you see that is also that investors are looking exactly for those opportunities you can have and this i'd like to um, give you an overview and also the hint if you would like to uh, do your term paper on this it is quite interesting this is a land matrix org um, this is a database that looks at exactly um, those land titles, that means, or the land acts, so to say, who is buying what kind of land, and they want to make it transparent in this way, worldwide, for what kind of intention, who is buying the land. It is a vast database, and it is quite interesting because it is uh, it covers and it's the best database worldwide on these kind of issues. If you look at those um, definition of FDIs, uh, we have um, the I, that we have the investment can come from a country in another country. That is, of course, the definition, and it uh, establishes operational um, um, investment there. And it can be, it can hit many fold theories, trade theory, regional theory, or organizational theory. And by definition, the IMF um, um, said, yes, it needs to have a 10% um, of foreign firm voting stock share in order to declare it as, um, um, as one, FDI. Otherwise, it is not an FDI. And um, there's a normally a high degree of foreigners participation on, and this is a transnational, um, uh, um, the transnational um, um, co company, it's a company, yes, transnational company, and the high involvement of non-monetary capital that is here involved. You can have horizontal and vertical ones. That means you have the same product uh, produces abroad. That means that you say, yes, I, I go for uh, like in the in, uh, car industry, I, I go to the Czech Republic because the wages are lower and I produce there. And vertical that you integrate here, the raw materials, and this has to do with the terms of trade that you generally add up um, the added value uh, is higher if you buy co cocoa in uh, Cote d'Ivoire and then you produce your chocolate in Germany uh, under highest efficiency criteria. That would be the vertical um, integration. And the degree of control can be indirect by a means of capital flows, um, of course, with the bank system on the one hand side, a non-equity control by our contractual arrangements that you say, I do a certain contract um, on um, with farmers, for example, uh, licenses, contract farming is one word here, and contract farming is a big issue here, and direct um, is coordinating and control of fully internalized uh, in the transaction uh, national company. That means you have an entity in Tanzania, for example, and you integrate in, uh, this completely. And there are joint ventures, mergers, and greenfield investments. Um, greenfield is that you build it completely new, um, and uh, mergers that you, you merge, of course, uh, several uh, factories or, or farms and joint ventures that you look at, at those um, contracts. And the, I would say here the, the definitions of land, is, it's here the, the lasting interest in taking control over land use rights. Um, this is the transaction includes either rights of the use of land, and here it comes resettlement and migration of small-scale farmers, 
Um, the land ownership and the land titles and land tenure systems are worldwide very different. In, um, in uh, South America, you have the Latifundian uh, and the, uh, the uh, Patron, um, and you have in Africa, in many cases, the land is from the president or the land are, is a community land. It's very, it differs also slightly, but land titles are here very different and investors are looking to buy their land. And normally it is, re, is leased today, it's for 99 uh, years, but of course it is a quasi purchase uh, agreement because in 100 years you can really have your investment also targeted with the revenues and the um, um, uh, revenues targeted. The large scale land acquisitions um, is the, this kind of land grabbing definition in the public discussion and you hear land grabbing and it is also widely used now in, this, uh, in the discussions at policy level. If we look now at the, at the, in the group work and I would like to try and test now with you um, the kind of outbreak groups. I would just say that you please select in an order um, of the groups you will see uh, point uh, the first or the second and look at the drivers motivation and challenges of FDI from the donor's perspective and then also from the, um, from the perspective of the host country that you see the investor, what kind of in what kind of motivation they have, what is really uh, for them important here. Please discuss and write on a, on a flip chart or discuss and write it down. And then you can just also um, refer, um, build small, let's say presentation or in few sentences you say it. The motivation of the most likely impacts for investors and the same from the host country. Is it okay for you? Can we just start? Because I cannot then immediately see you um, and it will be more difficult then also to, um, to answer questions. This means it is best if we would answer the questions right now. You just discuss it within the group and then you will say, um, how we we can um, is there any question? Not okay. Then I will now build the breakout session groups, and you will discuss exactly according to this what I read the two major points, and you will look on the first or on the second option. And this you do in the order of the groups you see, okay? That we have also the two different topics covered, okay? Good. I now build, we are around 30 people. I built then five conference rooms and I do it automatically, okay? Just one question. I don't completely understand what you mean by doing it in the order. Like who, which group okay. is the first, um, you, the first you, in which group? Yes, second. you see now the different groups, hopefully, in the conference, um, in, in these breakout groups. And then you could say the first breakout group is number uh, question number one. The second breakout group is um, number... Do you see the breakout groups in an order? No, we don't. But oh, now we can okay. just say the even numbers are doing question one and the odd number is question two. Yes. Okay. That's a good idea. Okay. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. So in, I would say in eight minutes, I will, or eight minutes, I will come back. Is it okay? Because it's a quick discussion. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Great.
Good. We're back. And the big question is now, who would like to present the, of the group number one? Or just say in few sentences, what was the, the major issue? Yeah, so maybe um, I can start. So we were group one, we were discussing the second question as we were an odd number. And we were thinking the main um, points were probably um, job creation um, due to investment in the country, maybe also to get uh, a lot of money in the country very quick to reinvest the money. And mm -hmm. maybe also the building of infrastructure that can be made. Um, also maybe some of these investments will bring in also educational programs that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. could be very interesting also maybe the increase in trade opp opportunities to also other countries yeah. and uh, maybe also the possibility of those ho host countries to actually channel the money that gets in in some ways with restriction to have some intentions to maybe this part of the m money has to go to i don't know anything in terms of environmental means this part of money has to go into infrastructure and so on maybe yeah. So basically, this is what we talked about. That's perfect, yeah. And the technology transfer, maybe, as one point, but this is perfect, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, uh, uh, any other question? With regard what we heard? No? Okay. Who would like to be next? I also saw that not everybody was joining, but it is, of course, um, up to you. But who, who would like to be next? Uh, we, yeah. we can go next. We're group yeah. two. I don't know if someone, does someone from my group want to do it? Otherwise, I'll just go in like three seconds. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're a group two, which means we were doing the first question. And we said that investor countries, um, their motivations are that they get access to new markets, mm -hmm. um, to cheaper labor, which reduces mm -hmm. their costs. And they also get access to raw materials sometimes that they might not have in their own country. Yeah. Also, yeah. on a bit negative side, there's usually more lenient like laws also environmentally but also like with labor um wages and stuff like that so it might be more yeah. attractive in a financial way for them to like invest in another country yeah. um, they could be more flexible in the market because if for example if the project doesn't go well they can just kind of leave and mm -hmm. invest somewhere else and not have to deal with the negative externalities that result from that and then it could also drive international cooperation, but most of all, we said it's probably to maximize their profits. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great, yeah, thank you very much. Those are very, very comprehensive, I think so. Yeah, I don't know whether I can recall another one. Yeah, okay. Is there another group who would like to present? Just waiting, uh, whether you would like to add also something as a, an additional point? Okay, not at this stage. Okay, great. Thank you very much then. Um, I would exactly these, this is what you mentioned also. This is um, the, the motivation for the, for the investor countries is mainly um, that increasing prices and volatility, the food security strategy is maybe one issue also um, for food importing countries, this is what all Saudi Arabia is doing heavily, for example, that they seek for land in order to um, secure their own um, food production and to be independent. And um, land FDI as an asset for financial investors. Resource seeking is really looking at the um, um, at the resources uh, to have more in order to produce more. Um, and then EU is here especially scarce in terms of the uh, lacking land, maybe apart from Scandinavia. And efficiency seeking is really looking at other production factors than other um, than land that are cheaper in, in, in the target country. You know, there's really looking at cost structures and being more efficient on the one hand side, but also to lower costs, having uh, the labor, of course, um, and the standards. And the standards is something that is really something important 
um, countries would like to bypass standards. And of course, it is obviously uh, not, uh, not nice. Uh, they try really to, to bypass it in the way to say, then we can produce to lower costs. And this is what is uh, palm oil, for example, um, is uh, one issue, or uh, you see it in many crops where you say, yes, we can produce there to lower cost. We also cut there uh, the forest and then, we, um, and, and then we import it at later stage. And um, barrier hopping, that is avoiding the tariffs. That's one issue again, um, that one can say, yes, um, I, I can produce there. I don't pay the tariffs anymore because of what I mentioned at the beginning, uh, import tariffs, what you see. Um, and then I produce over um, already there and can also maybe distribute uh, the processed products to other countries without um, crossing the border and bene benefiting from EU preference tariffs and de for developing countries. Um, that means um, this is exactly the motivations of the, uh, from the um, investor country and the host country is of course looking also, as you mentioned, um, the capital stock increase, um, but crowding in in terms of capital, but the threat of course is also crowding out in, in terms of products in food, no? that is less food maybe in the country. Um, then um, the public revenues, investment re uh, related tax income, and then we have the external capital often used for external debts also to say, yes, um, we have then also um, um, either we, we let investors come in and we lower our tax or others pay our taxes, uh, our debts. And, um, and then we can lower our general burden of the of credits. And technology transfer is capacity building, management capacity is one uh, issue on productivity increase, input use, and increase of uh, food availability, security, of course, and crowding in higher than crowding out. That's one uh, issue that would be also very important, no? if like a country like Tanzania lets in an investor, they have biofuel guidelines, for example, that it is not allowed to have crowding out effects. That means they have, the products have to stay in the country until they are processed. And um, these kind of measures each country uh, undergoes normally. Export increase or uh, import substitution is always um, the, idea. Um, if I'm a net importer, I can, of course, of certain um, uh, things, I can, of course, increase by letting in investors my own production in the country, or I can also ex um, um, increase my export if, if I'm a net exporter. Access to capital and markets, both at uh, host country and internal markets, as one idea. And this comes then becomes also to the um, negative effects. And I mentioned also some of those, um, that lack of responsibility of investors in case of food uh, insecurity. You see certainly that there are many, many, um, I, um, many cases where you see negative uh, intentions also. Um, and deprivation of rural communities, uh, migration effects, we have eviction of rural uh, population, refugees, uh, social inequality uh, between summer schools, uh, 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 smallholders and land investors on the one hand side, and the political instability that can be caused here. Um, even this economic development uh, can be accelerated, but also um, vice versa, it can be also uh, broke. In environmental degradation is one issue that is, uh, that is bypassing the standards, no? that people come in the country and they bypass standards and they pollute or use overuse of uh, water um, resources. Um, that's one of those issues what may happen. 
If we look at a global scale, just to give you some uh, ideas here, the drivers for FDI, it might be that population uh, growth is uh, their land use, uh, land is scarce. Uh, um, then we have climate change as a major driver, energy, energy prices, um, infrastructure um, as one issue that um, say is infrastructure there, does it hinder or does it foster these kind of developments? Technical progress and world demand. Is the world demand high in terms of economy? Then of course there might be also more money um, involved and then might be also more investments and vice versa. And land tenure security is one big driver. And this is also reported in the land matrix report. Please have a look at this. It, it is reported that where the land tenure system is weak, this is a major driver to, for investors to go in these kind of countries and to misuse or to use, exploit this weak points or weak systems in order to have investments settled. That's Evident, there's a sort of evidence on this. And per capita, of course, we have a, a, a shrinking, a decreasing land per person. You see it in the figure, and um, the um, value of commodity arable land index is increased. That means also land is more and more an investment product. But if you look now at these land investment statistics, we see that there's very little in terms of databases. There is a grain database, it's an NGO. They have quite good numbers on it. Um, World Bank, but you see they all differ a lot. They differ a lot. It is not that there is a good statistic on this. And one of the best statistics is a land matrix, what I mentioned and where you can have a look at. Um, the land matrix where you see that um, this is an open tool where everybody can add and insert their information on land acts. And, um, but here you see that the, the uncertainty of getting information on land investments is very, very high. If we look at those deals, um, just to, to look here since 2000 at the, at the uh, land matrix deals, you see that uh, many um, of those countries um, invested, or better to say here the heat map, you see where land investments are being targeted at, and you see here the rubber and palm oil in Southeast um, uh, Asia, you see in um, the area of um, in Eastern uh, Europe and uh, and uh, major the major hotspots are here Sub-Saharan Africa and West uh, West Africa and also Eastern uh, Africa and you see also uh, the South America. This typical let's say hotspots of um, land um, issues. If we look a little bit more in the, in the types of deals of investor uh, regions on, we see that clearly Eastern Africa um, had at a regional level, uh, we see that Middle East is up to intercontinental deals and um, and small to a smaller part only the continental and regional ones. That means that that there is are there cross border operations or not of the investors. No, and um, and the biggest is here southeastern Asia. You see lots of regional investments from from this region, but also intercontinental. That means it is a hot spot where the, the uh, national companies really invest, but also at a, from a regional level, they operate there and buy land and uh, invest in land, as well as uh, Western Europe. If you look at the top in 20 investor countries for concluded deals with agriculture intention, we see Malaysia is one of the biggest. 
um, uh, US, the United States and uh, UK Singapore, it's uh, decreasing along the uh, in the figure along um, towards the right. You have China also that you have a high number of deals, but in terms of land, it is a little bit less because they are also looking at mining and other uh, in investions. But um, also here in Malaysia, you have both in terms of deals and the land surface overall. You see in this type of investments, they do, they differ a lot. If you look at the land acquisitions by investor type and nature of deals, most private companies, stock exchange listed companies and investment funds in Africa, America, mainly the investment funds and in Asia, Europe and um, Ocean um, is o Oceania is um, the private company's stock exchange listed. And it has a lot also to do with the legal system, what is possible, no? And this is uh, also um, quite important here. And in terms of the target continent, we have in uh, lease and the, the concessions they have, mainly as hotspots in Africa and in Asia, but you see in outright purchase, Americas. That is the land title, the land legal land system, in Americas, it is possible to buy the land. And in the lease, and the leasing option is mainly in Africa and Asia for at least nine, 99 years, what we said. If you look at the um, intention of the top investor countries, what they want to do, and this is quite interesting in Malaysia, they have. Uh, a higher share of non-food, this is rubber also mainly, and, um, and food, this is palm oil. And um, in UK, they have a high of um, degree of agro or share of agrofuels. We can have in Saudi Arabia, a high share of food. And there you see each country has a very different strategy because of the land investments. And they look exactly on those um, to compensate maybe their own weaknesses or to seek for safety nets for security in terms of food and also in terms of resources. And this is exactly where your country has weaker uh, levels. Uh, this you try to level and to, uh, to have this kind of strategy involved. If you look at the target continent intentions on leading crops. We have palm oil as one of the biggest um, crops. And um, that means in South uh, Asia, Southeast Asia mainly. And we have for the number of deals and the land is here the highest hotspot. We have then also Yatrofa as an oil fruit in Africa mainly, but also sugar cane in, in Brazil. Also different regions have different hotspots here. And then rubber is upcoming by trend again. It's, um, and also the uh, sunflower is also one issue that is uh, um, quite in being increased in the past years. And corn, corn is also for fattening processes, um, but, but also for others like uh, to, to produce for food industry um, the, the sugar cont uh, content. And what does it really mean for, for uh, the developing countries? You see here now in this study, um, the agriculture um, percent of GDP, that means the higher, the higher is the share of agriculture added value to the entire GDP. And on the part of land tenure insecurity, it is a classification scheme of this study. You see here, the higher the GDP, uh, the, the share of agriculture from the entire GDP is, and the more insecure is the land tenure system, the more is invested 
one can say. It is more in the simplified way, but you can say it, and especially, and you see the hotspots, these are the, the um, countries in, in uh, the dark uh, um, black countries here in Sub-Saharan Africa, highlighted, it is Tanzania, um, and you see here Tanzania, uh, it is I, uh, Ghana is one, uh, one country, and I don't have all the abbreviations now, but you see this cluster is where insecurity of land tenure system is high and where the share of agriculture to, um, of the total GDP is high. There we have a high correlation of investments. This is a vulnerability of those countries because if they would not let in investors, that means also development would be potentially hindered um, in terms of um, investments agreements. If you look now at the welfare analysis, um, we have, of course, in the theories applied, we have different uh, uh, theories involved here. The welfare, um, economics to come back to our major um, method here is the target um, welfare among consumers, producers, government, what I explained on the one hand side, and the determinants of its goods and commodities produced and demanded. This is majorly what is produced, what is demanded, and what role has a government in terms of receiving or paying uh, certain subsidies. That means the welfare analysis is one out of a wide range of theories. It might be international trade theory. It might be also theory of the firm. It might be theory of international capital markets. And I gave you some major targets here, like transaction cost theory, um, ownership, location-specific advantages, ideal structures um, of enterprises, and so on and so on. You see, to have an overview on theories and classified our theory, what we have already discussed, into the wider range of theories, what is also used for FDI. Coming back to those, I just um, give you now the idea of what might happen if we have the welfare analysis in this context of, um, of land investment. That means we have on the one hand side, uh, maybe if investors come a shrinking of supply because there is a crowding out effect. This is what you see here. That means the overall supply of the country is going to the left. Why? Because the land is bought out, huge land is bought. It is produced, it is processed in terms of good and it will be exported. Then you would have a slight effect of exactly um, shifting these kind of supply chain uh, function. You would have in terms of welfare loss, an overall um, um, consumer surplus uh, of uh, a new one of this, and you would have uh, a loss of this. How do you, we calculate it is the upper part of the price and below the um, demand function. If we go one step further, we would have then this kind of area, what you saw as a neutral area, but you, we would have a loss in terms of welfare because of CS, this area, what you see in high green, okay? This would be the effect if an investor would come and everybody would be exported. And you can also have this as a 
producer side, on the producer side, it's below the price and in the upper part of the supply function, you have the old version and the new version, uh, the new area you see, and you would have exactly this as a plus, and you would have this area as a minus. That means we would have a loss in terms of welfare. And this is a part that is neutral because it is over overlapping to the old con uh, situation and the new constellation. Overall, you see, and this to simplify it, this was a very specific way to simplify it. We would have L, this corridor, that is the overall loss in terms of welfare if we have a full balance in the welfare analysis, if we have a shift of the supply chain. And this is how it is calculated. The other way around is now we have 12, but I will just the five minutes and then we do it a little bit later. Um, then we have also finished it. The other way around, we would have here an increase of the consumption. That means we would produce, uh, we would have a higher consumption in the country. And now we can again calculate it as CS is neutral. We have a minus CS in this area and we have a plus CS, what you see here as an additional uh, consumer surplus area, what we gain. And again, we can also do it at the producer surplus side. We have the producer surplus in the former sit situation. We have the shift and then we have a plus PS, this area, what is again um, additionally a benefit. And then we can also have this as a total welfare balance in terms if the consumer function is shifted to the right. That might be if for example, you, you see if lowering a tax or if the demand is higher because of um, more, more demanded in terms of uh, a better price structure as one example. Okay. These are the major effects what might happen. And I will explain I can, we can reveal it very quickly in the next lecture because I'd like you also as homework to look at the both effects now of exactly two constellations. The constellations will come in, a, in the PowerPoint very soon. But I just wanted to explain in the technical progress, we have elasticities. Elasticities means depending on the product by a change of a 1% change of a price, how much changes the, um, the, the quantity, that means the production. That you see it, this is a slope of the supply function. Is it very steep? It will not change a lot. Is it very flat? it changes a lot. It's higher and lower um, uh, elasticities. And depending on those, we can have different constellations where we have an overall welfare or a net negative balance, depending on the elasticities of the different product related um, um, elasticities. That means for, to give you an example, to understand it maybe better, in palm oil, maybe in, in Tanzania, consumers may have 
uh, in terms of consumption and very high elasticity. That means by 1% change, if the, you, you decrease the price of palm oil, you have an enormous increase by 5% of consumption of palm oil. Or the other way around, if you look at the production by an increase uh, by an increase of one percent of uh, cereals production, you have an enormous increase of uh, of production of the farmers. That means also here the elasticity would be then high. These are the constellations. Look at those, and the same would be in the supply elasticity and the elasticity of demand. You can have both what I explained. And this will be your homework, and we will pick up this also in a didactic way that we look at your examples. Please feel free to explain it in your own words what will happen if we have two different constellations of those. One is the US company Agrisol Energy leased 300,000 hectare in Kigoma in a region in Western Tanzania and this happens the favorable land equals to 80% of the total land on which bioenergy products will be produced. 20% will be converted to fallow land. And the effects, no adequate compensation for affected people, evicting 200 Burundi refugees. Agriculture arable land has been decreased. The consumption patterns changed. Production only targets the export of produced goods and the demand of goods decreased rel relatively to less compared production. Look at this case and try to come up with a very simple version of what will happen. And if you're really happy with this, you can also try in a, to model a, a situation how much it will be. For example, 300,000 will be produced less. The price is going by X. You can build a scenario if you want. And please also consider maybe that we have in the next week, maybe one or two people who say, yes, I'm very happy to, to explain it a little bit, what will happen. And as a homework, secondly, the second case will be, one second, this one, the, it's a good case. Um, green beans are produced on extended agricultural land, conversion fellow land to agricultural land with technology transfer. Access to seeds, agriculture, education, production, and processing of goods is in the country. Value chain is in the country. Development of infrastructure capacity building, partnership with 60,000 farmers, 600 pickers for harvesting and 3,000 processors. The effect will be then 100% of the production is used for domestic consumption. Agriculture arable land has been enlarged. Jobs has been created. Increased capital flow and demand on agriculture goods increased and the increase of supply is comparatively higher than the increase of demand because of technical progress. You have also a technical progress in method that we, we meant it as a, 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 a shift. It's, it's um, of the supply chain with a changing slope. Okay, these are the two constellations and please we pick this up again then um, in the next, the next week at the beginning, we will discuss it briefly. And please also have a look at the welfare analysis in terms of having a general understanding and to be able to classify this kind of technique and um, or method 
uh, to classify it in the wider context of positive versus normative analysis. What underlying um, assumptions do we have? Is it micro or is it macroeconomy? You should know and you should know why it is difficult to um, have no other better alternative of this way. And I gave you, and this is my last word, then we go into the break. Um, one second. I'd like to stop here and to give you an overview on, no, on the internet, because I gave you, where is it? Yeah. Um, an idea on some literature. And the literature is, where did I put it? We can also find it after. I think it was under announcements. In the announcements, okay, okay, yes. Um, I can also open it maybe just quickly before we leave. Then I think it was here in the Vorlesungsunterlagen and yes, this was uploaded and just to make it as explicit as possible, you have as a quick guide, you have those where you say, I just watched the video. I would like to see a very applied example in terms of literature from in ResearchGate. And then I have also included a video and these are more sophisticated examples because these are examples where exactly what I was looking for it, what we had today on land investments that we have a sophistic example on how to calculate a welfare analysis in terms of um, international um, land uh, of the FDI land investments um, in sub-Saharan Africa. And we have here also a cost benefit analysis in terms of the overall um, welfare analysis in trade. That means look at those, in the welfare analysis, you will maybe not be a welfare analyst expert per se. You have it also in other courses. I know it, but it is good to know it will, it will come again and again also in, in subsequent uh, um, slides and uh, lec lectures um, in what we have. Beyond, I have a look at the impact cost effectiveness overview very quick and also the overall of um, overview of instruments the instruments i will explain not next week but the following week no uh, next week i think at the end and i will come up with a, at a glance an overview on the policy instruments related to the common agriculture policy with regard to environmental policy and here it is more a general overview on policy environmental instruments and policies. And then you see then further policy cycle issues and policy analysis at EU level, as well as a cost theory, what we will have later on. This as a general guide, look at it because it is more useful than looking at the handouts, general, very general literature and this is more hands-on where you can really learn from it immediately because it's uh, exemplifying fine case. Okay. So do you want a break? I guess so, yes. Do you have any final question in the last two minutes? Not. Will we meet in half past 12? 
Is it okay? Good. Let's yeah. meet up at half past 12 and then we will go further and we will, um, yes, have the next, let's say, uh, methods, major method. Great. I hope that you enjoyed a little bit to have also an applied case. Thank you very much and until very soon. Bye-bye.